In this video, we're going to be looking at adding and subtracting rational expressions. So before we get to rational expressions, let's review adding and subtracting with fractions. Now, if you remember back in elementary school when you learned with fractions, the big thing you had to look for is you had to look for common denominators. Now, as a review, that's the number on the bottom. So in order to add these correctly, what you had to do was make sure these were the same, and then you would add the numerator. So 3 fifths plus 7 fifths gives you 10 fifths, which then is 2. So I have 3 fifths plus 7 fifths, that gives me 2 wholes. Now the same is true here. Uh, this is a rational expression. Here I have 3 over 2x plus 7 over 2x, and it's the same concept. I notice here that my denominators are the same. So what I have here is 10 over 2x. Now if you notice, I'm not adding these. I'm not getting 4x on the bottom. Because when we add or subtract fractions, we just add or subtract the numerators, not the bottom. So I still can simplify this because I notice I have a 2 and a 10. So when I divide those out, I'm left with 5 over x. So when the denominators are the same, it's very easy to do. You're just going to add or subtract the denominator. But when they are not, that takes a little bit of thought. So here I have 4 7 plus 9 13 and I am going to simplify. So the main thing I need to get is I need to get common denominators. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. The easiest one would be simply to multiply by the other denominator. Here's what I mean by that. So here in the first one, I have four sevenths. And uh, in order to make this denominator the same, I would need to multiply by 13 because this is a prime number. So what I'm going to do here is multiply the top and bottom by 13. Now you could be thinking, whoa, 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 isn't this breaking the math rules? Well, it's not. Let's think about it for a second. What is 13 divided by 13? It's one. So if you remember, uh, one is called the multiplicative identity, meaning you can multiply anything by one and it stays the same. So that's why we can do this. If I multiply by the same uh, numerator over the denominator, I'm actually multiplying by one, so I'm not changing anything. So over here, if I want to get a common denominator, I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 7. Because that way I would have 13 times 7 on the bottom. So let's do a little multiplication. So 4 times 13 is 52 over 7 times 13 is 91 plus 9 times 7, that would be 63. And... Uh, we would have 13 times 7, which we already know is 91. So now that I've gone ahead and I have multiplied all that out, I'm going to add my numerator. So this becomes over 91. So 52 plus 63, that is 115. So simplify as be 115 over 91. Not a very pretty fraction, but it works. So we're going to do a lot of multiplying by 1 here. Now remember, 7 over 7 is 1. So for rational functions, it is the same idea. It's just we're multiplying by a little more complex things. So here we have some steps of how to add this rational expression. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to factor if we need to. So in this case, I don't need to factor because it's x plus 2 that is factored. Here I have an x that's already factored. So we're just going to go to the next step. So next, we're going to find our common denominator. So I'm going to do a little note here. My common denominator is going to be what? Well, on this one, I have an x. On this one, I have an x plus 2. So my denominator is going to be x times x plus 2. I can't just add 2 to the top and bottom of this particular fraction and say it's the same. I can only multiply by 1. So remember the same thing on the top and bottom. So now I'm going to go ahead and multiply. So for this one on the right here, what's missing? Well, it's already got an x plus 2, so I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x. For this other one, we're going to multiply by x plus 2, because that's what's missing. It has an x. It's missing an x plus 2. x plus 2. So let's see what we get. So we get 5 times x plus 2 over x times x plus 2 plus 2x over 
x times x plus 2. Now you can go ahead and already put these over one fraction bar. I'm just going to show you all the steps. Now from here, we do not want to cancel the like terms in the numerator denominator. That defeats the entire purpose of what we just did. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute on the top and then combine my terms. For the bottom, we are not going to multiply it out. It's actually easier for us to just leave it factored because we're going to do some more stuff with it later. So I'm going to distribute the top here. So I get uh, 5x plus 10 plus 2x. We're combining this 2x here. So this combines to be 7x plus 10 all over x times x plus 2. That's it. If we can factor the top and do a little canceling, we will. But in this case, uh, nothing comes out of 7 and 10. It's, it's good to go. So that's it. We found our common denominator. We add our numerators. And then if we can, we're going to simplify and factor. But that's not going to happen. Let's try another one. So here I've got 4 over 3x cubed plus 5 over that mess here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by factoring here to help me figure out my denominator. So on the bottom here, let's see what we got. Let's take out a 3x squared. So 3x squared times, what am I left with? I'm left with a 2x plus 1. So let's find our denominator. So our denominator, let's see what we have. So in this particular term, I have a 3x cubed. So that has to be part of it. So 3x cubed. Now this 3x squared is counted in this 3x cubed, so I don't have to do anything fancy here. So that's kind of nice. So this is accounted for. But it also has a 2x plus 1, so I have to include the 2x plus 1 in my, in my denominator. There we go. 2x plus 1. Got a little messy there. So let me write it out so we can figure out what we're multiplying by. So I'm going to rewrite the problem just to clear it up a bit. Plus 5 over x squared times 2x plus 1. All right, so let's do some multiplying. So if I look at my common denominator, 3x cubed, I already have that. So I'm going to have to multiply the top and bottom here. Let's change color. By 2x plus 1. So top and bottom because otherwise I'm not multiplying by 1 anymore. So 2x plus 1. So I multiply top and bottom by that. Now for the second one, what, what's different? I've got the 2x plus 1. I have the 3. The only thing I'm missing is an x. This has x squared, x cubed. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom here by x. So here's what I get. I get 4 parentheses, 2x plus 1 plus... 5x all over 3x cubed times 2x plus 1. So now I'm just going to distribute and combine on the top. So 8x plus 4 plus 5x all over 3x cubed times 2x plus 1. Oops, 1. And combine the top. So notice I distributed here. I combine to get 13x plus 4 all over 3x cubed times 2x plus 1. Now, if we could simplify it, we would, but the top is not factorable. 13 is prime, 4 is not, so there's nothing we can really take out of them. So we're done. Now, if you notice, uh, this takes quite a bit of steps. Make sure you're writing them out as you go. I don't suggest doing more than one step at a time because it gets confusing quickly. And it's very easy to lose. Uh, steps, lose variables as you go. Let's do one with subtracting and then we'll be done. So let's start by factoring to see what we've got here. So this top one's factored, that's fine. So I'm going to have x plus 3 times x plus 3. And this factors to be x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay, let's find our denominators. So let's look for what they have in common. So I notice here that they both have a x plus 3. That is a given. Uh, luckily, I don't need to multiply by that particular one right now, so we're good. Now, what do you, does each one have that the other doesn't? Well, this one has an extra x plus 3, so that has to be included. And on the flip side, this one has an extra x minus 3. 
So that's going to be my denominator. I'm taking this extra x plus 3, taking this extra x minus 3, and that's what we're going to put together. So let's rewrite the problem just to make it a little easier to read. Plus 1 over. We've got x plus 3. I'm going to write it as squared because that's the same thing. Makes it a little shorter. Minus 1 over x plus 3, x minus 3. Okay, let's do some multiplying. So for this particular one on the left, if you notice, uh, what is it missing? Well, it's already got the x plus 3, x plus 3. I'm missing the x minus 3. So that's what we're going to multiply by. Top and bottom by x minus 3. If I look at the one on the right, it's got an x plus 3. It's got an x minus 3. Well, it's only missing one more, x plus 3. Now, I'm not going to multiply out the bottom. Like I said earlier, it is so much easier just to leave it factored because there's other things we can do with it later. So on the left, I get x minus 3 times x plus 1 over, big fraction mark, over x plus 3 squared times x minus 3, and then minus x plus 3. All right, so now what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to multiply this out and do a little combining. So let's see what we get. Uh, we're going to have, that would be x squared minus 2x minus 3. I am distributing, so if you want to call it FOIL, you can do that. So first, outside, inside, last. Uh, there's a video on my channel on how to do that if you want to review. And then here I'm going to distribute this negative 1, so it'll be a minus x minus 3 over that whole mess. x plus 3 squared times x minus 3. Okay, so let's combine our terms. So we get x squared minus 3x minus 6 all over x plus 3 squared times x minus 3. Now we can try really, really, really hard to factor the numerator here, but unfortunately we cannot. So we have subtracted these two rational functions. Even though it looks a little bit more messy than what we had before, we can do some other stuff with this in the future. But that is how we add or subtract rational expressions. It takes a little bit of work, but write your steps out. Make sure you factor first, find your common denominator, subtract, and then simplify as best.